So good morning guys, welcome along. Uh, we're down here at Costa del Bayford Meadows, down in the southeast of England. Uh, down at quite a tight little twisty cart track on the Friday afternoon of uh, the seventh round of the Bayford Meadows Karting Championship. So uh, if you want any more information about that, I'll pop it downstairs in the description. So check that out. All the results, as always, are on Alpha Live. Um, so we're down here on the Friday. We're down here with ASM Racing. And we've got a little practice session, or a few little practice sessions out in Roxy the Rotax Max. <laughs> So here we are guys, this is uh, the ASM morning. This is uh, Super Legera Ben. Hello. He used to be known as Big Ben, but in the last six months he's turned into Super Legera Ben. He's now lightweight. And Deck, the right hand man. Hello Deck. Hello. So Ben, how's the day been going so far? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wet, wet. Dry. Dry, wet. Dry, yeah, so okay. Right. Do you like the do you like the toilet brush microphone? I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> with, I wish you bought a clean one. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so Ben of ASM Racing, is it ASM Racing or just ASM? Yes. <laughs> so what have we got here? Talk us around this old machine. Well, we have got a Super Legera Mark II spec. As you can see, it's got a one of a kind factory sticker kit on it. Um, We've smashed the shit out. Oh, I can't say shit, can we? You uh, can say shit, it's alright. Oh, right. I can say shit. We've smashed the shit out of it today. We broke it. So, Billy the Willy, what's the welder, is going to come and sort it out for us tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to win Sunday. So. Oh, great stuff. Yeah. So, what year is it? Uh, 15 or 16, I think. She's an old girl. OTK Tony Cart? Yeah, she's called Carl. Carl? Previous owner. Oh. So, it's called Carl. Um, yeah, it's been modified a bit with the lightweight parts and whatnot. Yeah. And what uh, what motors are we running on this sim? Uh, one two five Rotax. Uh, they're pretty much just an Aprilia RS one two five lump with a different power valve and obviously no gearbox on. But it's the same sort of bike engine that goes in the bike really. And they're all sealed yeah. by the engine builders. Yeah, so all you... sealed. Got to have a sealed engine builder, Jagsy and Paul for them. That's the on it. And these cream ones are the super fast ones, are they? Uh, well, it's the one that's fast in my head anyway, so... <laughs> I don't you. think there's, there's the other ones are any slower. And what sort of horsepower are they making? Uh, Depends on who's dyno you go on, anywhere from 30 to probably about 32. But, okay. And yeah. the weight classes for the carts are 162 kilos for lightweight and 177 for the fatties. Yeah, Super so. Fat Max is 200 plus. We've come down from that, so we're now in the 177s. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. And the awning's nice and quiet before the chaos at the weekend begins, yeah? yeah. this morning and I've managed to make an absolute mess of it already, <laughs> so it's a good start. So how did you get on with the Friday? Uh, you happy with the times? Yeah, it's alright. No players <laughs> are here, so we'll see tomorrow, won't we? Difficult to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Alright, well thanks very much. We'll oh, see you on you. track. So here we are in the pit lane, ready to go. We're going to go out around a warm up lap, get to the start line, then I will talk you around a lap of Bayford Meadows. To start now with the race and driver excuses, uh, this is not my car and it's got to be raced on Sunday, so we won't be pushing it at 10 tenths. Uh, the seat's too big, so I'm rattling around in there, and I've not been in an owner car for about two years, and I've not been in a road tax for about four years. So I'm expecting to be super rusty, but we'll give it a try and see what sort of lap times we can get down to. Cold tyres, so a couple of laps at the start we'll be just trying to generate some heat into the tyres, warm them through. Here we are coming 
across the start finish line we want to move over to the left hand side of the circuit and just at the tipping point we want to be nipping a little bit of the pit lane entry you can see with the white marks worn away there very late apex into turn one and as you get to the apex of the corner there's a crest right in the road so you need to get back on the power and drive it through the apex of the corner if you haven't got any weight on the rear of the car you will lose the rear end stability so you need to be on the power driving it through not using too much curve on the exit and a short squirt down to turn two and three Now tricky corner turn two and three as you're turning in you want to kind of aim for the the exit rumble strip curb and try and brake in a straight line so that you're not unloading the wheel of the car whilst you're heavy on the brakes and then once you start to come off the brakes you can turn it in and almost take it as one big sweeping corner and then fire it out across the rumble strip aiming towards the grass on the exit and try not to run into it Turn into hairpin one, be careful of the right corner of the car at the back, make sure you don't dip the right rear wheel onto the grass as you're trying to pinch that last centimetre of track. Nice smooth run round, grabbing the inside kerb to hook the front of the car around the corner. Try not to run too wide on the exit and use the rumble strip, and stick to the right hand side or the middle of the track for hairpin number two. No point going all the way across the circuit with just wasting time moving over there. Hold a tight line all the way around for hairpin two, and sacrifice hairpin two to get a good drive out of this left hander onto the back straight. One of the most important corners on the circuit before the long straight. You need to make sure you're on the throttle as early as possible and not running out too wide across the rumble strips. Into this long left hand corner. Now, some people like to go out wide here and cut back. I think it's better to sit in the middle of the road. One, you can defend easier in the race situation, but two, you're not wasting time moving over to the right hand side of the track just to come back. So hook it in nicely to the apex and run it through. Now this right hand sweeper all the way around the mound is almost two corners. And it's a very tricky corner, very hard to be smooth on the power all the way through here. And once you're on the throttle, you don't want to be coming back off. You just want to be progressively winding it on all the way through. Run a little bit of curve on the exit. fast right, very very similar to the right hander, the fast right at the end of the lap at PFI. A little lift as you turn in, get the cart to rotate and fire it through. And then braking into the rise. Just in the braking zone there's a big bump in the track which unsettles the rear of the cart so you've got to try and be smooth on the turn in. And again the most important corner on the circuit is you've got the long straight all the way down to pretty much turn two after this. So you need to drive it through the apex and fire it as fast as you can all the way down the straight and that should get you a reasonable lap around Bayford Meadows. So let's go for a couple of laps and then I will talk you through all the things that I'm doing wrong.
couple of laps now. You can see we've got a little bit of temperature into the tyres, got a bit more grip coming into the car. But you can also see how erratic my driving is here. So I am seesawing away like I'm fighting a silverback gorilla. So this is just really from lack of seat time in the car. This is the first session out. And what's happening here is although the lines are okay and the times are coming down, where I've not been in the seat, I've lost that finesse behind the wheel. So the controls, the inputs to the controls, the brake accelerator, the steering, it's all too erratic and it's all too harsh. It should be nice and smooth and flowing and have a certain finesse about it. That really is just, like I say, down to seat time. So you can see because of that, it just looks like I'm skidding around all over the place, losing time left, right and centre. But that's to be expected, to be honest, the first time back out on track. basically behind whatever the cart is doing, I'm reacting to what the cart is doing underneath me. Rather than being able to preempt what the cart's going to do and make an input to the steering brake or throttle before it happens to correct it, I'm actually reacting after it's happened and that's what's losing the time. Again, it's just a question of being out of the seat for a long time, brain's not quite up to speed with everything that's going on. So we'll continue for a few more laps, see what we can get as the best time in the session.
the end of the first session. Not a great session, but as expected, to be honest. So now in the pits, we'll download the data and have a quick look at my best lap. So now we can download the data and compare my best lap against the best lap of the day so far. Uh, looking at this data, we can quite clearly see where I'm being too aggressive on the brakes going into the hairpin in the final corner. So they're the main key points to work on over the next couple of sessions with the data being an invaluable tool to help you to get faster. So we've been at it a couple of times now, slowly chipping away at it throughout the day or throughout the afternoon. This is now the final session with the best lap times of the day and the best driving of the day by far. How much smoother the driving is, you can hear in the braking zones, we're not locking the rear axle up and skidding the tyres and you can see the fronts not understeering and sliding across the circuit everywhere. So we've repositioned the camera right in the nose cone so we could see a bit more of the track and try and view a few more of the lines and the apexes and things to compare to the data over the day. Now let's see what we can get this lap time down to.
And there we have it guys, you can see the best lap of the session and the best lap of the day, 48.08, just under 48.1, but you can see the lap times have kind of plateaued at 48.1. So there's no point keep pounding round and round as we've hit the plateau, it's better to come back in, go through the video footage, go through the data and see where we can improve again. But unfortunately, we've run out of sessions in time today. A little bit gutted to not quite crack the 47s, but I know of another session or two we could have got in there. So let's bring you folks back in the pits and go for a little debrief of the day. So here we are guys, back home, back in the workshop. Uh, just going for a little de debrief with uh, Mr. Carlsberg and uh, looking through a little bit of, a little bit of data which uh, I'm going to get up on a big screen later and have a proper look through. So the answer to the main question, am I still fast-ish? Well, ish, I suppose. It's, my best lap was about 0.9 of a second off the best lap of the day. Uh, here come the racing driver excuses. So it wasn't my car, so I didn't want to bend it because it's got to be raced at the weekend. The seat was too big for me and it wasn't set up to me and mainly I've not been in a cart seat for a long time, so lack of seat time. And with the weather today, the morning was pretty much written off, it was just the afternoon when the weather was okay, we only got about 25 laps in maximum. So considering the track conditions, it had been washed clean, the lack of running, the cart set up, etc, 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 obviously it is never the driver's fault. Um, I was fairly pleased with that. Ben reckons it would have probably put me uh, somewhere around 10th on the grid for a race weekend. And all them other things that we've just mentioned are probably worth half a second to seven tenths of a second. And then the last bit would be chasing that carrot in front of you in a race situation. So I still feel like I could be up the front and up the sharp end of the grid in an actual race weekend. So that's good news. Um, Big, big shout out to Ben from ASM. Thank you very much, mate, for sorting me out a few sessions today in the cart. Thoroughly loved it, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really, really good day. Best of luck for the weekend. Hope you can win it on Sunday. And we'll try and get back in November for the final round eight of the championship and cover it for the weekend then. So with the power of video editing, and it now being nearly a week later since I've actually put this video together, I can tell you that Ben actually had a clean sweep over the weekend. So fastest in quality on pole, heat one, heat two, first place, final first place. So a massive, massive congratulations to Ben. Great driving throughout the day. Good work on the spanners as well to get the cart working right. Um, but it also means that actually my time is not too disappointing as I was comparing myself against the person who won on the Sunday. So that does make me feel a little bit better. Um, my personal highlight of the day was actually Ben's reaction to the toilet mi microphone. Thoroughly enjoyed that. So well, well worth the trip over there uh, just to see the reaction from Ben for that. And a little bit of toilet humour for you guys. We'll see if we can get that out and about somewhere else in the future. So it was a successful day, really, all round. Uh, not the fastest, not the slowest, somewhere in the middle to start with, considering the lack of seat time and the lack of seat time in that kind of cart. Um, need to change my driving style completely for that type of cart racing. Uh, really pleased with it, really. Just nice to get back out there. So thanks very much for watching. Look after yourself, guys. Take care and cheers. Ta-ta.